This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Interesting week in the NFL where a lot of the hot starts in 2023 are being put to the test in week number six. The Buccaneers taking on the Lions. We have got the Colts without their top quarterback facing the Jags. So it's put up or shut up week in the NFL. We're going to break down those games with Dr. Ed Fang, getting his read on them based on what his model is saying to get you ready for week number six. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research, joined here as mentioned by Dr. Ed Feng. You can find his work at thepowerrank.com and check him out on Twitter at thepowerrankEd. Week number six is looking pretty interesting because there's a lot of weather impacting this slate, some weird mismatches in matchups. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Looking forward to uh, another NFL NFL weekend. I think there are a lot of interesting games, and we'll continue to see if uh, you know teams like Jacksonville can – continue to win and succeed. I also think it's interesting that like we're into week six and the lions are involved in a game where we're saying, is this team legit? But we're not asking that question about the lions. We're asking about their opponent. And like, exactly. Especially for you in, in, in Michigan, that's gotta be a weird shift to have them be like the more guaranteed asset right now. It certainly is a weird shift. Everyone around here is, already kind of anticipating the downfall of this team <laughs> it may happen it may not uh i yeah we'll, we'll get to it i mean i think uh yeah it, everyone's anticipating the worst but then you know you kind of forget the you know the last two out of three years they made the playoffs under caldwell right so it's the nfl right there's a regression to the mean and um but right now i think they're above the mean i think they're doing really well they got PFF's number one graded quarterback right now. So what could possibly mm-hmm. go wrong? My boy, Jared Goff, finally uh, getting the hype that he deserves. We're going to break down that game later on and break down other key games across week six here in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread. Wherever you get your podcasts right now on this feed, you can find a breakdown of Thursday Night Football between the Chiefs and the Broncos via Tom Vecchio. That is up on the Covering the Spread podcast feed, talking player props for Thursday night's game that is also up on FanDuel TV plus Tom has also seen breakdowns of Sunday night football those go up on Saturday morning here in the podcast feed so go search for covering the spread wherever you get your podcasts and if you like what you hear leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel America's number one sportsbook right now new customers Get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, totals, and more. So visit FanDuel.com and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL, must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. First online real money wager only, $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700. Visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland, 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia, or call 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-8-HOPE-N-Y or text hope y in New York. We'll dig into the big games across week number six here in just one second. But first, Ed, the Vikings this week put Justin Jefferson on IR. And he's not a quarterback, but obviously he's a player who's going to impact the the spread in, in the betting market. So I wanted to ask you, how do you go about making adjustments for teams missing impactful players who are not quarterbacks in a given week? Yeah, I mean, it's hard for me. I mean, I still do this somewhat subjectively. Like, I don't actually have a number for Justin Jefferson. If you told me he was worth two points, I wouldn't 
disagree with you. I think it's also matchup based. Chicago secondary is in tatters right now. And, um, you know, that that's not, a, you know, this, the, there's, there's just got a lot of guys hurt. Right. So if, if any game is going to, ma- you know, if any game uh, Minnesota wouldn't get deducted, maybe for having, not having Justin Jefferson, it might be this game. I actually have this right on the market. I have Minnesota by 2.9 and, um, you know, could it, could, should there be an adjustment? I'm not, yes, I think there should be some adjustments. I'm not sure based on this particular matchup, whether it changes um, what I have in terms of the number. Justin Jefferson's clearly important, 2.87 yards per route run. That's pretty amazing, pretty amazing mark. I mean, there's no real replacing him so it could be one of these things where like you know the market has it on you know maybe maybe you're okay betting minnesota this week because of yeah. the match against chicago secondary and then you're fading them massively the next week uh because it is a completely different ball game i'm at 3.9 right now uh in favor of the vikings um so not enough of a value where I'd want to take it personally, uh, especially because there's a lot of ambiguity there right. with regards to like what it would look like in their first week post Jefferson. Uh, ben Fox of um, I think he's at he wrote this for for the win. Uh, he used to work for Vsin, used to work for uh, ESPN. He wrote a piece. He asked bookmakers to rank the 25 most valuable NFL players who are not quarterbacks as far as their value to the spread. And they kind of gave him numbers. So he pulled bookmakers what they do. And I feel like that's kind of a good baseline. Like if you don't have your own numbers, as far as like um, deducting for certain players, you can kind of look at that as like kind of a guideline of like, okay, maybe the player you're thinking about wasn't discussed in that piece, but like, you can say like, okay, impactful wide receiver, how much do they matter for their team? For Jefferson, it was 1.67 points, uh, according to that piece. So I think you can lean on like, You're all right. yeah, I, I think you can lean on that kind of stuff and um, use that as your guide because he's asking the people who would know if anyone's going to know it's bookmakers. Um, so like, I think leaning on that kind of data is helpful in these situations. So he, they had Jefferson at 1.67. I think that makes a lot of sense. I can't push back on that personally. I think that um, kind of just using that as a guideline saying, okay, how much should I deduct based on this can be a shortcut to this kind of question. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Okay. Let's talk about some games here for week number six, starting off with the Colts and the Jaguars. Cause the Colts have actually been pretty good so far this year, but they're facing the Jags. Jags are four and a half point favorites total in this game down to 44 and a half. This is one of the games uh, that is impacted by wind, at least a bit about around 10 miles per hour for this game. Ed, you pinpointed the Jags as a team the market was too low on entering last week, and then they went out and beat a very good Bills team. So is the market now properly valuing the Jaguars in putting the spread at four and a half? No. Jacksonville <laughs> was a three and a half point favorite at Indianapolis the opening week of the season. So, I mean, I personally don't understand. Like, this this might be a decent number of Trevor Lawrence's hurt, but... You know, personally, it kind of makes no sense to me at all. I mean, there there are definitely a lot of factors going on. I think I talked a lot about Jacksonville last year. We're looking at a team with a top 10 pass offense, league average defense. That That's good, especially in that division. Um, Indy is a team that was probably underrated in the bottom five at the beginning of the season. Um, you know, from a lot of what I've seen, um, Mark's, markets weren't making too much of a difference between Anthony Richardson and Gardner Minshew. I think that's about right. Uh, Richardson obviously has higher upside, and and I think I saw he's on IR now, right? So yeah. he's he's on the shelf for um, a while, which is kind of what you expect when he crumples on the ground and starts pointing at his throwing shoulder, right? Right. So I don't know. I mean, I I, I don't think I I think we have to respect Indianapolis. I think we've the market had them underrated a little bit, but this. This simply, this number simply does not make sense to me. My my numbers see a lot of value in in betting on the Jags here at home. I mean, maybe it's a travel thing. They're coming back from London after being there two weeks, but it's the easy way to travel, right? And you're going home, so I don't know. Maybe there's something I'm missing. I, I like the Jags a lot here. Yeah, I just I don't disagree with you at all. I think that like. Um... I agree with the market that there's not a huge difference between Minshew and Richardson. They get they're different routes to get there. Like 
obviously the pet, the rushing efficiency for the, the Colts goes down, but the passing efficiency might be better. Not because Richardson is not like a good quarterback, but because like he's a rookie. Whereas Minshew is a guy who's been in the league for a very long time. Uh, I think that those things do benefit the short term projected passing efficiency. And that matters more for my model than rushing efficiency does. So like, it's kind of a, a wash at the end of the day, Minshew over short spurts can be a very capable backup. So I agree making it kind of baseline, but like baseline based on the way the Jags have played at times this year, probably shouldn't be four and a half. Um, so I think that I agree with you here where the Jags, if they're going to make them three and a half point favorites, and I believe they covered in that game in week one as well. I, I'm trying to yeah. think back. It was yeah. tight. It was they won tight, by 10, I, I think at the end, but it yeah, was tight I throughout. They, I think they scored a touchdown late to right. make it 10. And like the Colts are three and two, but like one of those wins against the the Ravens where the Ravens had all these like weird fluky mistakes in that game, which is a very Ravens thing to do. Um, It was an insane, that was an insane game. And that was the Zay Flowers pass interference and overtime that didn't get called. Yep. Like, yeah, records are still fluky. I know it's not as fluky as we see in college football because the discrepancy of strength of schedule is not as big. But to me, I do still feel like we're seeing the impact of that in making the spread only be four and a half. I think it should be a little bit, a little bit juicier than that. Yeah, I agree. I think there's a lot of value on, on Jacksonville and, you know, like came on the show last week, talked about the future, but uh, for whatever reason, the market, I mean, I think there's more edge here than there was on the future last week, honestly. Yeah. And now with Richardson being out and the, the Texans dropping a game, the Colts drop or the Titans dropping a game, that Jags future looks even better. The one that you pinpointed last week to win the AFC South. Let's talk now about those Lions because they are on the road taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Total in this game is 42 and a half. The Lions are three point favorites down in Tampa Bay. And the Lions success is not a huge shock, at, at least to me, but the Bucs is. Um, they may not have Mike Evans this weekend to test out his hamstring on Friday, but can the Buccaneers give the Lions a run for their money in this game? Uh, I mean, maybe they're at home. It's the NFL spreads only three. I'm not convinced about this Tampa Bay team. I mean, they certainly, um, I guess I'm not just convinced about Baker. I I, I don't (laughs) see him as a quarterback that is legitimately going to lead a team into the playoffs. Um, They're three and one probably should not have beaten Minnesota week one. And I, I would, I would probably put them more in fraud territory. And a lot of that is, is on Baker. He's been fine, but, uh, he was a uh, he was a quarterback that I I just love like like betting him to throw a pick that was fun and then the market adjusted and so that went away very quickly unfortunately but I don't know I just I, I I'm not yeah I, I would lean towards fraud with with Tampa Bay in contrast you know with Detroit uh, I, I'm eating some crow on doubting their pass offense coming into the season. I did not understand the hype over uh, offensive coordinator, Ben Johnson. I thought it was very likely that the second half of last season was a little bit of noise. And so far I'm wrong. (laughs) The pass offense has been great. They're fifth in my adjusted passing success rate. uh, And they, they look pretty good. And uh, on defense, uh, my defensive numbers have them at 21st so far. And, you know, I was actually more high on this side of the ball because they actually made some free agent signings to, to bolster a secondary that's been near the bottom of the league for the last two years. Uh, the 21st and my just passing success rate, that's not good, but it's good compared to where this unit's been over the last couple of years. Um, yeah, I think I think that Detroit's pretty legit. You know, I have this at I basically have this Detroit by three, so not showing a ton of value here. Obviously, when you're only three point dog, uh, you can certainly win at home when you're at home. Um, but, uh, I, I, I don't necessarily like it. I, I, I don't like this stamp. I'm not convinced of this Tampa Bay team. Yeah. I have it at 2.9. So right in there, right in that range, uh, with the lions favorite in this game. So no action for me going back to Tampa Bay. I think that if you were looking for a reason to say Tampa Bay has been a fluke, you could point to their early down efficiency because in early downs, they've been honestly below average, especially once you adjust mm. for opponents. And but they've been like feasting on late downs. Like Baker Mayfield on third down has been unconscious this year. And do you expect that to persist? Personally, well, probably not. Like I love Baker, uh, but like I don't expect him, based on the track record he has given us, to be a guy who torches the league on third down just kind of the way it is, you know, he's never been great under pressure and stuff like that. So 
I think that's the first thing you turn to. If you want to say Tampa Bay is due for regression, it's based on that third down stuff. And that's something I believe in. That's why I have this, this spreadsheet that I have is like looking at their early down efficiency versus late down success rate. Like that to me says a lot of their offensive success may not be sustainable unless you think they are suddenly the best third down team in all of football. Yeah, they're, they're probably not. I would guess not at least. Let's finish up here by talking about Monday Night Football. We got the Dallas Cowboys taking on the Los Angeles Chargers. And right now, the Cowboys, two and a half point favorites at FanDuel Sportsbook. Total in this game is 50 and a half. And obviously, this is a spot where the crowd will favor Dallas, despite the fact it's in Los Angeles because the Chargers can't attract fans and the Cowboys travel well. But the Chargers coming off a bye and should get Austin Eckler back this week. No, no travel for them either. So how do you see this game playing out? Right. I mean, this this uh, spread also really confuses me. I think when I look at the Chargers, whether I'm looking at my preseason prior, whether I'm looking at uh, data from the current year, uh, they all have the Chargers ahead of the Cowboys. The Cowboys have been really up and down. They had some, you know, huge wins and then completely, uh, you know, got destroyed by San Francisco, which I think is an interesting combination of signal and noise. I do think there is some signal in there but I, I, I certainly don't think that the Niners are that good. Um, I, I just don't think they're that good. I think they're good and probably should be the Super Bowl favorites at this point, but they're, they're not that good, right? And, you know, the Chargers are coming off a week's rest, so you got a little bit of an edge there. They are at home, and even if they don't have any fans, at least they're not traveling uh, like Dallas is. So you're not, you're not going to in any way convince me that Dallas has some edge just because a couple more fans – uh, might be there at, at SoFi. So, yeah, you know, I, I mean, um, what else? Uh, so Mike Williams is hurt, but I feel like that has to go into your preseason prior for the Los Angeles Chargers because he's always <laughs> hurt, right? Like, I feel like that's baked into the numbers already. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I feel like this is this is off. I, I feel like it's very strange that Dallas is this, this much of a favorite on the road after getting destroyed last week. doesn't really make sense to me. I uh, like the chargers here. I actually have the chargers favored by 2.3 points. So like, yeah, I am that's what I have the opposite. <laughs> right. Exactly. Like, uh, let's see. What is, what does my number actually say? I think it's, it might be two point. It is. Yeah. 2.8. So like, it doesn't. I don't care about the crowd that much, honestly. Like, no, I mean, look, the crowd matters. And if sure. I'm overestimating what the home field for the Chargers is, like, I, I'm willing to accept that. But you right. can't say that you're going to give Dallas two points. No. Like, <laughs> traveling to Los Angeles, right? right? And they were, I believe the game was at San Francisco last week, right? Yeah. So it's like their second week. I don't know if they stayed in California, but right. uh, I mean, you can't give Dallas an edge there. Right. And, and then you add in the buy for the chargers too. And like that matters as well. So like it's a combination of, I think these teams are pretty similar in terms of like power rating. I think they're very similar. You give the chargers a bye week and you give them zero travel. I think that adds up to like the chargers should be favored in this game. You know, maybe I am overestimating them at 2.3, but like I think making them the favorites is the right way to go regardless of what number you want to make that. Right. I did some work with, uh, uh, buy, uh, sorry, what you should add for a team that's coming off of a buy. Yeah. And if I remember right, like in college, it actually mattered. It was like a point. Yeah. And I think it was less than the NFL. I want to think, I want to say it's like a half point. I think it's less than six. Yeah. Well, that, that's probably, um, it's probably a good number. Uh, I think that's what, I think that's roughly what I have as well. So it's not as big as, uh, as people might think, but I do think it matters a little bit. And just another reason why this is this is a weird number for me in the market. Yeah, I experimented this offseason like with uh looking at overall like net days of rest, looking at um like if a team is plays on a Thursday then is facing a team that that played the previous Sunday, like I couldn't get any edge uh based on doing mm-hmm. that, but it, for a bye week I got to point 6. So that's the number I used um and like that's enough in a game where they're two and a half point dogs. Like that means without the buy, it'd be Dallas by like three. And like, that just seems really, really hefty. So I can't get to this number in any way. Right. 
Maybe yeah. maybe it's the effect of Mike McCarthy, Mike McCarthy not letting his coaching staff go home to their families after the <laughs> devastating loss, right? It's a Kellen Moore revenge game. Uh, or is it a Mike McCarthy oh, revenge cool. game against Kellen Moore? Who can say? Uh, but like, you know, I feel like that's got to be worth half point too, right? Kellen Moore against his old team? Kellen Come Moore. on. That's right. <laughs> All right. He's gonna throw. Well, he's gonna throw right at where Trayvon Diggs would be, right? You know. That's right. That's right. And he's gonna throw at every play just to show Mike McCarthy that it can, in fact, work to be a pass-heavy team in 2023. That's all we got here for today on the NFL version of covering the spread. But Ed, I'm glad that we are aligned on the Chargers one because I'm always concerned when I'm super far off, and that's the one I'm by far most off of market on for this week. So reassuring to me that we're on the same page with that one. People want to find your numbers or find any anything else you're working on. Where can they find that? I'm everywhere, Jim. Uh, had a great episode of the Football Analytics Show podcast yesterday. Had Rob Pozzola on, Ooh. and we ended up talking for about 15, 20 minutes just on process. And it's always interesting for me to hear what he's doing different every year, and he's dealing with different data sets. And he talked a lot about it, which I thought was pretty cool. We also actually had a pretty extended conversation about NFL props and what to bet and uh, you know, kind of what the future is. So... My podcast is the Football Analytics Show. Uh, if you're looking for something else to listen to, just check that out. It is up right now. And then, um, yeah, check out my newsletter at thepowerrank.com. Every Saturday, I come out with Five Nuggets Saturday, which is my curated list of the sports betting tips and, and analytics and humor. So check that out at thepowerrank.com. I'd already finished all my weekly podcasts this week, so now I have something to listen to while walking the dog later on uh, by going to the awesome. Football Analytics Show. Love listening to Rob Pizzola, so I'm looking forward to that for sure. Find Ed on Twitter at the Power Rank. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonis. Don't forget, Primetime Tom for Thursday Night Football is up, and he'll be up for uh, Sunday night as well on the feed on Saturday morning. Tomorrow, we're talking to J.J. Zacharyson about player props for Week 6 and also Rob Friedman to preview the ALCS between the Rangers and the Astros. Maybe be the NLCS too, depending on what happens tonight between the Phillies and the Braves. That'll be up in your podcast feed tomorrow and on FanDuel TV Plus and the FanDuel YouTube page. We'll talk to all of you then. Enjoy Thursday Night Football. We'll talk to you all again tomorrow. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. <laughs>